you know we probably should go through the timing on this engine it's at 1920 got that igniter in there rotary mag that's that type L Greaser goes in into the crankshaft uh, rear breather old style but original to the engine 1920 uh, the block is drilled for the four screws also fly ball governor system there rod comes down activates that butterfly right there once we get it adjusted it'll, it'll be about right there in that position and one of them shop built mufflers you know what I mean sounds good that water system on that carburetor there fuel drain back exhaust rocker on Nighter fuel pump. Yeah, we're gonna make that fuel line right there, you know. Probably ought to get on with that. That's all this engine needs to run right now. It's got them timing marks there on that flywheel. It's real easy to time these right here, you know. All you do is just bring it around on compression. I'll show you. Okay, the engine came up on compression. See, it's coming, the engine is coming to the compression stroke right now because I felt restriction on the piston. So, watching the, the, the marks on the flywheel and, and the old ones, just had a line right here with some errors on it, some little little hash marks. Had it stamped in there. E exhaust and ignition. Same position as this right here. But that's exhaust and ignition. When this when this when this mark right here comes around to the mark on the on the block in yonder in the casting it's casting in every one of them you won't have one that don't have that that little indent straight down in rotation to the crankshaft so when that comes on around the igniter should far and it uh, well, I'm going to get that camera down here and show you when that igniter fired. The the notch in the block down there and the notch in that flywheel right yonder is is in in a position when that igniter should spark and it just did so you know it, i mean going on perspective you can move it around but if you was right here it would be like one second pie straight up and down and it doesn't snap so you know everything's in correlation and then that puts the the, the the crankshaft you note know where the flywheel key is and that in relationship to where the throw on the crankshaft is I'll show you that that gib key is about uh, let's say two o'clock come over here on this bench 
and you find a crankshaft that's, uh, that's got that gib key about the same position, about 2 o'clock on the clock face, give or take a little bit, and you will note the position of the throw on the crankshaft. And that's going to the, the, the flywheel is in a clockwise rotation. So that means that that throw is coming upward in relationship to the degrees. That's what I'm talking about, degrees. Remembering where the throw on the crankshaft is, opposite of the gib key. Note that in the salvage over there, opposite of the gib key. One and a half horsepower McCormick Darien International. The gib key is opposite of the crankshaft throw. Make a note. And, and then noting that the uh, igniter tripped at that point. That's what I'm talking about. One and a half horsepower McCormick Dairy and M. That's a 1920 right there. Now y'all come on back next week. Oh, that's that fuel pump down in there. We'll get fuel I'm plumbed into that. Yeah, you know, just kind of thinking about it. This whole project started because of a bad valve. Just saying.